Today is a very sacred day. Does anyone know what is special about today? Hanuman Jayanti, yes. So let's start with the prayer to Hanuman Ji. Mano Javam Marut Tulya Vegam. Javam Marut Tulya Vegam. Jitendriyam Buddhi Matam Varishtam. Jitendriyam Buddhi Matam Varishtam. Vatatmajam Vanara Yuta Mukyam. Vatatmajam Vanara Yuta Mukyam. Shri Ramadutam Sharanam Prapadye Ramadutam Sharanam Prapadye So I'll explain the meaning and then we'll recite once again and then we'll have the discussions. Mano Javam Marut Tulya Vegam So he can move as fast as the mind and as fast as the wind. Extremely fast that is. Jitendriyam buddhi matam varishtam that he is the lord of the senses and not only the sense but he is very intelligent buddhi matam varishtam best among the intelligent and then vat atmajam he was born from vayudev vat atmajam and he is vanara yutha mukhyam although he was not the official leader of the vanaras but he was the strongest among the vanaras and to that Ramaduta. His greatest heroism happens when he goes all alone into Lanka as a messenger of Ram. So he's defined, that is his defining idea, Ramadutam. Sharanam Prapadhi. And to that, Ramaduta, I surrender. So let's recite once again. Mano Javam Marut Tulya Vegam. Javam Marut Tulya Vegam. Jitendriyam buddhi matam varishtam Jitendriyam buddhi matam varishtam Vatatmajam vanara yutha mukhyam Vatatmajam vanara yutha mukhyam Shri Ramadutam sharanam prapadye Hare Krishna so today I'll speak on the topic of how ability needs to be balanced with maturity. So we'll talk about the story of Hanuman and we will analyze this broad lesson. The Ramayana is a timeless classic. In fact, few books in world history have had as much influence on humanity even according to secular scholars, as has the Ramayana. Almost for a mil more than for a millennia, a quarter of the world has been inspired by the Ramayana. And of course, the Ramayana is the journey of Ram. Ayan refers to journey, Ram refers to, of course, the Lord Ram. So the journey of Ram. But even in the Ramayana, the most beloved character in many ways is not Ram. It is Hanuman. Like this is a portion of the Ramayana that is recited most often whenever it is recited. Which is it? Sundarakand. Sundar and one characteristic of Sundarakand is that actually Ram is almost absent in the Sundarakand. Only in the beginning he is there when he sends <coughs> Vanaraduta Preshak Rama. So these are various names from the Nam Ramayana. Nam Ramayana is a compilation which describes the whole Ramayana in a series of 108 names. So, right in the big, so you can, I'll recite some names throughout this class, so you can also repeat after me. Vanaraduta Preshak Rama Vanaraduta Preshak Rama So, Vanaraduta, as his messenger, his Preshak means to send. That Ram, he sent the Vanaras as his messengers. And in our moment, we have a senior leader, his name is Hanumat Preshak Swami. So that means Hanumat Preshak, one who sent Hanuman. So in the Sundarakan, Hanuman is, Ram comes in the beginning when he is sent by Ram, by, uh, by send, he sends Hanuman away to search for Sita. And then at the end, when he comes back. But the Sundarakan centers on the heroism of Hanuman. And the Saundarya of the Sundarkand, this beauty of the Sundarkand is that 
there is the greatest presence of Ram in the absence of Ram. And especially the, the emotional climax of the Ramayana comes when the servant of Ram and the consort of Ram meet in separation from Ram in the Ashokwatika where they meet there there is the greatest presence of Ram in his absence so Hanuman is an extremely beloved worshipable devotee and of course today I won't speak on the Sundar Kant today I'll speak a little bit about the incidents before the Sundar Kant so it's interesting that uh, Lord Ram is told about the glories of Hanuman after he has experienced those glories. That means, actually, when Ram is searching for Sita, it's an urgency, it's an emergency. They don't have time to sit and discuss stories at that time. But then, when Ram comes back to Ayodhya and he's ruling, at that time, Agatha Munigana Samstuta Rama, can you repeat? Agatha Munigana Samstut Rama. So various sages came there. And one of the sages who came was a special sage, Agastya. Now Agastya is an extremely powerful sage, almost like Narada, is everywhere. So Agastya comes and tells the story of Hanuman to Ram in the Uttarkhand. That after the whole action is over, then, okay, what is their background? He comes to know about it. So Hanuman is actually born, you can say he has double parents. The past was a time when there was greater interaction and intersection between the celestial realms and the terrestrial realm. Gradually we could see that there are three levels of reality, the earthly level, the terrestrial level. Above us where the devatas live, that is the celestial level. And above that is the transcendental level. So because Kali Yuga is such a deeply contaminated age so because of that the earth has been quarantined from the rest of the universe <laughs> suppose somebody gets an infectious disease hmm? so then what happened uh, you, you have to keep a distance As I, about 15 years ago I had TB so at that time I would have a mask around my face so I would give you classes <laughs> So, so because the earth is contaminated, so it has been quarantined. So the interaction between the higher levels of reality and the present level is not that much. So Hanuman is at the earthly level, his parents are Keshari and who? Anyone knows? Anjani. Anjani. It's called Anjani, the son of Anjani. And at a celestial level, he is the son of Vayu. 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 Mm -hmm. So I won't go into the mystery of how that happens. But basically he is very powerful. And as he grows up, generally children are mischievous. So Anjani, when she has a child, and this child as his child is, uh, she puts him in the, in the forest. They are, they are Keshari and Anjani, they are Vanaras. So Vanara, the word what it means? Vanara. So it, can, it, has, it has different etymologies. Va nara means, is that a human? It's all so much like a human. Or it could be one nara. Those humans who are human-like but living in the forest. So they are not ordinary monkeys. They are an evolved species who, if you see the hierarchy, <coughs> they in many ways, the hierarchy of being, if you see in the Puranas described, the vanaras are in some ways above the manavas. So they are, and we see, you know, the, the Manra is also able to do, Hanuman is able to do things which humans are not able to do. So, but still they live in the forest and she just, she is looking for some food to get for Hanuman when he's just a small baby, he's hungry. And she leaves Hanuman on the forest bed, at a safe place. But Hanuman is restless. And now to be restless is okay, it's a... It's a, it's a challenge for parent, for the, if a child is very restless. You keep a baby at one place and then you come back and the baby has disappeared. Where has gone? So now at least babies, you know, they, they, they can crawl, they can't walk about, they can't run. So they have not gone a very far distance. But if somebody is restless and powerful, 
<laughs> That's a very troublesome combination, isn't it? <laughs> so she just kept Hanuman for a short while, and Hanuman just didn't go into the next room. What did he do? Zoom! He jumped into the sky. He saw high up the sun, and he thought the sun. Oh, it, it is it is morning, so it is it is it is not the blazing sun. It is a rising sun. So he thought, hey, this is a nice shiny fruit. And he just jumped up to try to reach that and catch that fruit. And as he was charging towards it. Now, as we grow up, to some extent, we come to know about our inabilities. Isn't it? Now, many, of, many people feel, I have many hidden talents. <laughs> but the problem is, they are hidden even from me. <laughs> <laughs> hmm? But as we grow up, we all we all become aware of our inadequacies. Every one of us is struggling with many painful inadequacies. We, we are in a particular role where we had to do something, but we just don't have the ability to do that. So, uh, as initially when children are there, they don't even know what they can't do. So he just saw that fruit and jumped up. Now a more adult person said, you can't reach the sun. But he saw it and he jumped for it. And he had that power because he's the son of Vayu and he had celestial power. So he started bounding towards the sky. He's bounding towards the sky. So at that time, an eclipse was about to happen. So Rahu was also going towards the sun. So Rahu was going to cover the sun. That's how he brandishes his power. But when he saw, Hanuman saw that, oh, I want this fruit and this, this creature also <laughs> wants the fruit. So he just tossed Rahu. Now, nobody had treated Rahu like that. <laughs> when Rahu comes, people get scared. And Rahu is bound and hey, the whole cosmic order is being disturbed. He immediately went to Indra. And he said to Indra, actually, what is happening over here? He says, you are the head of the gods. You are meant to maintain the cosmic order. And it's like Indra is the head of the gods. And generally, if there is a problem, there are different levels at which the problem can be escalated. Say, if you have some, you got some phone and phone is not working, you do approach customer service. And then if you're the particular attendant doesn't solve it, then you escalate it to a higher level. Then you escalate it to a higher level. So like that, Indra tries to solve the problem first. If Indra can't solve, then it is escalated to Brahma. If, if Brahma can't solve, then it is escalated to Vishnu. So gradually, so here first they go to, he goes to Brahma. And when he goes to Brahma, what happens? Sorry, he first goes to Indra. And he says, okay, let me see what is happening. And then meanwhile, Hanuman starts charging towards Surya. And Surya gets alarmed. He says, what, who is this? He, Surya also goes to Indra. He says, he says Have you cre has, has a new Rahu been created? What is going on over here? And Indra says, who is this disturbance? And he starts charging in his chariot towards Hanuman. And Indra's chariot is also shining. So Hanuman thinks, this is a small toy. This is, a, this is another toy. So he changes course from Surya towards Indra. And starts charging towards Indra. Now Indra thought that this might be some upstart who is just making some mischief. And he will run away when I come. But he was shocked to see him running towards him. So he also, what is this? He, he just took his thunderbolt and he hurled it. Now Hanuman was powerful, but he's still a baby at that time. A thunderbolt just hit him. It just hit him straight on the face. And he got knocked out. Scratched on the ground. Now Vayu saw this and Vayu buffeted his, buffered his fall. But uh, when Vayu saw that, he was completely motionless. Almost not breathing also. So why you became furious? And he said, he, yeah, he was doing mischief. But you don't have to kill him because he's doing mischief. That's just outrageous. And he got so angry, he stopped all the circulation of air. We, when we live in the world, we often don't realize how dependent we are on things outside us for our very existence. 
So, uh, if the suddenly the air stops, so within moments we would die. So it is like it is a the first there, a, there seemed to be a cosmic disruption, but now this was like a cosmic emergency. <laughs> if nobody can breathe, how will you live? And then, as I said, there are different levels of escalation. So now, immediately, what happened? So you, if you have a complaint against the Indra itself, you know, Indra is the Indra is the party who's done wrong. So immediately, the escalation went to Brahma, Brahma. and Brahma came running down, and all the devas also came to Vayu. He says, "Don't stop breath like this. Don't stop the air like this." He says, "You know, as long as my son's life air is stopped, I will not have any life air for anyone." So Brahma came and he understood what had happened when why you explained to him. And Brahma just went and gently moved his hand on the forehead of Hanuman. And just by that touch of Brahma, who's a very powerful person, Hanuman got healed and he came to consciousness. And why he was relieved. At that time, Indra and others still had questions. Who is this being? How could he jump up like this and go into the sky and reach the celestial objects? So then Brahma, seeing the question on their face, he says, Listen, O Devdas, I'll tell you about this Vanara. He said that this Vanara is going to do extraordinary service to Ram. All of you are terrorized by Ravan. Ram will be countering Ravan. And this Vanara will grow up to become the closest servant of Ram. Bless him profusely so that he will do your he will assist Ram and do your work for him. On hearing about Hanuman's destiny, all the devatas were relieved and delighted. And then they said, Surya he had himself been first scared to see Hanuman. See, suppose somebody very hefty looking person comes and they seem to charge him toward us. I get scared, who is this person? Is he come to rob me? Is a terrorist robber? And then we come to know, actually that is the security guard of our building. <laughs> oh, wonderful. You know, more power to you. <laughs> because you are powerfully protecting me. <laughs> Isn't it? So like that, in the, so uh, Surya said that, now, I bless you with one ten thousand of my effulgence. And Surya's effulgence is huge. Even that is enormous. And he said, that now Surya is not just a source of light in the physical sense. Surya is also said to be the source of light in the sense of knowledge. So it says when you learn the Vedas, I will bless you so that you can learn super fast. All the Vedas you learn proficiently and efficiently, super fast. Then Indra said that no, he saw that his mouth, his jaw had become somewhat uh, misshaped, it had come out. So he said that, and that because because of his thunderbolt, he said, I bless you that my thunderbolt will not be able to injure you. And he gave his own garland. Then the other devas were also there. So Yama said that my yeah, Yama said Dandam it is Yama has got a staff which you can just bring down the greatest of enemies. So he says, My you will be immune to my staff also. Like that, various devtas gave various uh, benedictions. And then Brahma said that, Vishwa, Vishwakarma said that, whatever weapons I make, none of those weapons will be able to affect you. Brahma ji gave a series of benedictions. He says, you will have the ability to change your form at will. You will have the ability to, to fly as fast as you desire going wherever you want. You will have the ability to never get fatigued. You will be blessed with not invulnerability to my weapon, but only temporary vulnerability. Brahmastra will, it will attack you, but it won't kill you. Only temporary it will restrain you. And in this way, Hanuman was profusely blessed. And now, as I said, ability is glorious. But still, there was frivolity. And frivolity is childishness, playfulness, mischievousness. So, now, see, there are some things which others can do for us. 
and there are some things which we have to do ourselves. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we want to help someone. Say we want somebody to do something and we are ready to help. Now we can help the unable, but we can't help the unwilling. <laughs> say sometimes um, it happens that say we are trying to drive a car, start a car, and the car doesn't start. Does it happen here sometimes? <laughs> not so much. In India, India it happens. <laughs> then what happens if the car is not starting? Push. Yeah, then some people who are nearby, they come and start pushing the car. And the person inside trying to steer the uh, steer the wheel and have the gear, move the gear, and outside are pushing. And everyone together, they get the car to move. Now suppose the people from outside are pushing, but the person from inside has gone to sleep. <laughs> 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 then, no matter how much you push, the car don't, or worse still, if the person inside is pressing the brake. <laughs> then, the people outside, why should we keep pushing? Isn't it? So, we can help those who are unable. If the car is not moving, you can help it to move. But if the driver itself doesn't want the car to move, we can't help. So, what happened over here was, that they, the, the point I'm making is, there are some things which we can do for others, but there are some things which they have to do for themselves. So ability can be given, hmm? but maturity has to be chosen. Maturity has to be cultivated. So Hanuman had ability, from birth itself he had extraordinary ability, and with all these blessings he got even more ability. But along with that, what did he have? And frivolity. His childish playfulness was there. And what happened because of that? Now, <coughs> he had got one experience. He tried to jump to the sun and he got a, he got a, you could say, slightly malformed jaw. That's how his name becomes Hanuman. So actually there are many different etymologies for Hanuman also. <coughs> one of them is that one whose jaw, Hanu, is prominent. Man means prominent. Now another meaning also is that Hanuman, mana is pride, Hana is destroyed. So one whose pride has been destroyed. Now it's, it's here what it means is, there are different ways of understanding this. One is that yes, he is, the thunderbolt was thrown upon him and he thought that I can go to the sun or I can go to the Indra but he could not. But that is not what it refers to. The pride can be destroyed in two ways. One is by humiliation and the other is by humility. Humiliation is where somebody wants to be proud, somebody wants to be arrogant, but somehow people don't respect them. Somehow nobody recognizes them. Not only they don't recognize, but they disrespect them. So, so humil humiliation is false ego frustrated. Whereas humility is false ego rejected. When a person has humility, they don't delight in parading how big I am, how great I am, how glorious I am. Their joy doesn't come in that. When somebody has humility, their joy comes in their own purposeful contribution. I want to do some service. I want to do some contribution. I want to you do justice to my abilities. So a person who has humility is not a pushover. Humility, a person, humble person is also purposeful. And they can also be firm when required. But they, humility simply means, you could put it this way, is that humility means to not let our ego come in the way of our purpose. So if we are going for say distributing books or we are going to share Krishna Bhakti with someone, we are giving, giving a talk. Sometimes pe many people will come, many people may respect. Sometimes nobody may respect. Our purpose doesn't depend on our ego. We will still share Krishna's message whether many people come or few people come. So when we said Hanuman's, one whose pride has been destroyed, it is in which sense? Humility or humiliation? Humility. humility. He has consciously chosen to subordinate himself to Ram and Sita. Although he is a great and powerful person, he consciously has chosen that I will be the servant of Ram. Vanar is Ramadutam, messenger of Ram. So he, that is another meaning of the word Hanuman. 
So Hanuman now he knew enough that I can I should not fiddle with these celestial bodies. Sometimes uh, when we don't get what we want, what we get is what we call experience. <laughs> when we don't get what we want, <laughs> and what we get is what we call experience. So suppose somebody has drunk some milk and it's hot, ah, the tongue gets burnt. Then what happens? Then even if you give them buttermilk, <laughs> they'll blow it before drinking. So Hanuman had learned from experience that I cannot play with these celestial objects. So he did not fiddle with them anymore. But still, that frivolity was there. So now he was in the forest and what to do? See, generally, there is no, no fun in mischief if nobody sees the mischief. <laughs> you know, if, if you are in a home and there is silence, you can say it's cold and it's peaceful. But if you have, if you have children at home and it's peaceful, then it's not golden, it's suspicious. <laughs> what are the children up to? <laughs> so now Hanuman, he had this child childishness and he had to do some mischief. So in the forest, what to do? So normally, he, he found that there are many sages and he started interfering with them. You know, when they would make some sacrifice, he would steal away sometimes the the give or the sacrifice, sometimes steal away the wood, sometimes he would steal away their deer skin, sometimes he would just be a nuisance to them. <laughs> now, the sages also knew about Hanuman's power. They knew if we do something to him, sages are known to be sometimes short tempered, they can give curses. But they also knew. Now, if we can give a curse, but then again our air will stop. <laughs> Isn't it? Why you will again get angry? So they don't want to give any, they don't want to cause any harm to Hanuman. But still they wanted to do their duties. So they were thinking what to do, how to scurve Hanuman. They went and told his mother and father. So now what happens is that when children are very small, the parents can be like Arjuna. They stand the bow and arrow aloft to protect the children from all dangers. They can protect and restrain the children. But as the children start growing up, especially they become teenagers, then what happens? They have a mind of their own. And I was at the airport, I was looking at various books. Some of my books are also in, usually nowadays in, in the airport stalls. So I was looking, I saw I one book and the title was, Where Did My Child Go? So I thought maybe it's like a mystery novel of a child getting abducted or something like that. But then I saw it as a parenting book. And what was it about? That, you know, my child was so sweet and nice. And now become a teenager. Where did my child go? Who is this uncommunicative, disagreeable, sullen person who has replaced my child? <laughs> so teenage is a very turbulent phase. The children also try to discover who am I? They are, too, they are too big to simply identify themselves as my, my parent's child. But they are not big enough to have their own identity. They don't have a career, they don't have a job. So they are very much thinking, who am I? That's why it's natural that we go through that phase. So what happens is that, as I said, um, initially the parents may guard their children like Arjuna. Guard them from the world and guard them from themselves also, from their own lower side. But once the children go into teenage, then the parents sometimes have to become like Draupadi. <laughs> what can you do? <laughs> Surrender. <laughs> what can we do? <laughs> so, Keshari and uh, um, Anjan, Anjani, they said, what can we do? They tried to restrain Hanuman, but just couldn't. Just couldn't. Hanuman was just so restless. And so it's one thing if somebody is restless and arrogant. But Hanuman was restless and sweet. So Krishna was also like that. Uh, Krishna would do all kind of mischief and then he would come with such a sweet innocent face that whoever would be angry would lose their anger. <laughs> so they didn't know what to do. And it was, it was exasperating for the sages because they had to do their duties. 
So then finally, they came up with a plan. They said that the problem is not with Hanuman. He's a child and children will be mischievous. But the problem is he is like a child who has too much power, who has too much ability right now. So what we need to do is take away his ability. In today's world also, this is what has happened that through technology, we have all got a lot of power. Through technology, you can just click a few buttons and get a movie from anywhere, get a news from anywhere, contact anyone from anywhere. We've got a lot of external power. But external power without internal power can be dangerous. It can be dangerous. Now, I mean, America, here it's, there's a lot of concern that some people have these assault rifles, these automatic guns, and people can be hot headed. So, there's a lot of anxiety because there's so much power, but unless there is a discipline, is the more outer power we have, the more inner power we need. If we have outer power without inner power, it can lead to enormous damage. Damage not just for our, ourselves, but damage even for others. I was in, last year when I had come, I had gone to the sin city of America, which is that? Las Vegas. Las Vegas. So then what happens is, now the gambling has been going on throughout history. But here when people go, now these people have credit cards. And you know you, you needn't have much money in your pocket. But if, at best in the past, if people would lose, they would lose all the money in their pocket. But now you can lose the money in your pocket, you can lose the money in your bank, you can lose the money in your home, you can lose your home also. All without even getting up from one chair. So everything comes ready made. So the greater technology facility, technolo this is not a problem with technology. It's a problem with our own mentality. Technology is neutral. We could use it for good, we could use it for bad. But the more power we provide someone, if that power, if that outer power is not complemented with inner power, then that outer power can wreak havoc. It can cause enormous devastation. Enormous devastation. All of us get bored. Uh, when we get bored, say in the past, what we do? We might go to sleep, we might chit chat with someone, we might go for a walk. But now, if you get bored, what will what do we, most of us do? Go on mobile. Go on mobile. No, and then we might decide, I want to spend, I'll just spend five minutes. But five minutes can become five hours. <laughs> so you just click one, and then click another, and then click another, and click another. Whenever anything seems free on the internet, any, whenever any, any product is free, we should know we are the product. <laughs> <laughs> if anything is giving you to free, then that is a tool to buying us. So buying us means what? That actually we end up getting attached to that. And then we will be, we will charge for that after. So it's one thing when we, when it's, it's if we are cheated, say if we go to a shop and something is worth uh, ten dollars but we pay hundred dollars for that, we'll be angry. Now, to be cheated is bad. To be cheated and to not even realize we're being cheated, that is worse. So if I pay hundred dollars and I don't even come to know that it's actually a ten dollar worth thing, that's even worse. But to be to be cheated, to not even recognize that we've been cheated, and to think that we have got a great deal. That's worse. That's the worst, isn't it? You think I got a damn cheap, cheap deal for $100. Hmm? So, <clears throat> I am <coughs> imitating the way people use, people speak. I got such a good deal. So, now when somebody thinks like that, they are being the biggest fools. So, what happens on the internet is, that our time is precious. And when we think, oh, I spent two hours, three hours, I could watch this movie free. I could watch, the, I could see this free, I could read this free. 
yes we think we are getting it free but value is not measured only in terms of money value is also measured in terms of time what happens every time when we do something every action is an unwitting commitment to similar future actions when we do a particular activity then impression is formed in the mind and once the impression is formed we get prompted to do that again again and again and that's what happens is we think we are getting it free but we are being cheated our time is so precious but just because something is coming free we casually spend hours and hours on this thing and then we get attached to it and then even if you don't want to give it up if even if you don't want to do it you can't avoid it i remember one devotee he told me that he was driving a car and there was now india ipl match is going on so he now he's a devotee he was he was he was, he was in touch with the ipl watching the matches and then he was driving a car going for a going for a going for some work and suddenly a truck hit him from behind and the, as a truck hit him his car went round and round and he realized oh, i'm going to die but he said the first thought that came in his mind is oh i won't be able to know who won this match <laughs> sir i was appalled <laughs> instead of thinking about krishna i was thinking about this so what happens is we all cultivate some attachments unwittingly unknowingly and then we end up being cheated so it's like somebody is cheated but they think they got a great freedom so it's like that that we think we are getting a free we getting it i'm watching it free but it's we who are getting attached and we are being cheated of the proper use of our human life so we need, the more technology mm, provides us power the more we need spirituality to increase our inner power otherwise we can just get manipulated we can get lost completely anyway so coming back to uh, the story uh, where were we do you remember yeah they decided hanuman is not the problem it is his ability that is the problem so they decided we'll take the ability away from you so in general we shouldn't think that most of the times it's not people who are bad in the situation it is the association it's the circumstance that makes people do bad things of course you can say there are bad people also no doubt but most of the time if good people are doing bad things it is largely because of the situation or at least we can give them the benefit of doubt and think that this is because of the situation so <clears throat> in this case it was not the external situation it was the internal situation it was so immature so they gave him a curse by which he forgot about all his powers he forgot about all his powers i remember i had gone to a, a retreat center and we were doing a retreat over there now i i post my i write on the gita every day says so i write a gita daily i post article every day and i have a lot of service on the internet also so i went there and then the first thing you notice is it's like there's no internet <laughs> and then i just called some other devotee told them to you know i had written the article i told them to please post the articles and then like the next three days the first for one two hours it was like uh, uh it uh, for two three hours it was very annoying you can't you are disconnected from the world but then once i got busy doing the programs talking with the devotees and interacting and then three days just went away like that and i realized that i didn't really miss it that much i didn't miss it that much so sometimes many things we think we desperately need them but if we have something better to fulfill our life you know better in our life to fulfill our life then if i don't need this that much so sometimes to uh, just as I was talking earlier about this you know we need inner power one way to develop that inner power is to have a periodic you could say a digital detox mm -hmm. <laughs> digital detox maybe once a week once a month for one day no connection with the internet no connection with social media so what happens even if we are not going out of control that itself will give us some greater control so for hanuman they decided that 
we will they gave him a curse they touched sacred water and just forgot about all his powers now that does not mean he became powerless he was still a powerful vanara but the extraordinary power which which uh, was the source of the trouble for them that knowledge of that power was taken away from him and when that happened say if, if there's a child who is, is frivolously spending a lot of money and then the parents say actually our sh our shares have crashed we don't have any money the child is forced they can't spend any more money now now even if the parents have some share somewhere the child doesn't have access the child can't spend money like that so that's what happened he had that power but he didn't know he had the power so then he grew up and then he became a friend of uh, both wali and sugriv but more a friend of sugriv and when there was a misunderstanding between wali and sugriv at that time <coughs> he went with sugriv to the forest now he he lost only the abilities which were causing him mischief which were which were making him do mischief so he learned from the learned the vedas from surya and he still remembered that and that's how when hanuman met ram for the first time just by hearing ram speak by hearing hanuman speak ram was so pleased ram was so pleased he said this person must be learned in all the vedas he's speaking so sweetly so elegantly so wisely just being in the presence of this person is such a joy so oh, actually when we speak we should speak to give others peace of mind but most often we speak to give others a piece of our mind <laughs> <laughs> so and our mind is full with agitation so we make others also agitated mm -hmm. sunday we in this sunday feast class i am giving i am going to speak about ahimsa so i want to talk about uh <clears throat> verbal avoiding verbal violence that's the topic i'll be speaking on more over there but hanuman had that power and of course he had character he had virtues and he endured himself to ram ram also recognized this is a, this is a special vanara and then all of them went in search of sita hanuman was very expert so he buddhimatam varishtam as it is said he was very intelligent so there were several difficulties that came up but through them all hanuman remained very calm and uh, sensitive angad became very disheartened see angad was a very young person and he was made because he was the son of the previous king so he was made the group leader sometimes what happens is that in india now i sometimes counsel some cricket players not national international cricket players but look uh, but some little lower those are aspiring for international cricket so what happens sometimes if a young person is made the captain then what happens the older people feel insecure why did why did they become the captain and the younger person also feels insecure <coughs> because feels i have to prove myself so uh, now in angad's team there was jambavan who was like who was like super senior you know so they like came was very very and then hanuman was also there now both of them were really subordinate and it was a nice team uh, team spirit was there but what happens especially when difficulties come then cracks start coming then cracks start coming so what happened was when Ang, they had to come back within one month with news of sita but one month was nearly over and they couldn't find sita anywhere So Angad became very disheartened, and Angad said that if we go back, uh, we'll be humiliated. You know, Sugriv may even punish us. Sugriv may kill us for having failed in this mission. So Hanuman said, "What are you saying? Sugriv will not do that." Now, what do you mean? He said, "He had his own brother killed. So why would he not have his brother's uh, son killed?" So he said, "Let's not go back." So Hanuman was very gentle, very intelligent. He was praying him that, that you know, let's resolve this. So he says, <coughs> it's described that in the Nam Ramayana that 
कपिवर संतत संस्मृत रामा वर संतत संस्मृत रामा अंस मोरल से कपिवर संतत संस्तुत संस्मृत रामा वर संतत संस्मृत रामा संतत मीन्स ऑलवेज कपी वर कपी इज मंकी वर इज द बेस्ट ऑफ द मंकीज सो द बेस्ट ऑफ द मंकी इज हनुमान संतत संस्मृत राम इज ऑलवेज रिमेम्बरिंग राम एंड देन वॉट हैपन तद्गति विघ्न ध्वंसक राम तद्गति एक्सप्लेन द मीनिंग दैनिक तद्गति इन देर प्रोग्रेस विघ्न वॉट एवर ऑब्स्टिकल्स वुड कम ध्वंसक बाय द लॉर्ड्स अरेंजमेंट दैर ऑब्स्टिकल वुड बी डिस्ट्रॉयड तद्गति विघ्न ध्वंसक राम ध्वंसक राम सो वॉट हैपन समटाइम्स यू प्रे टू द लॉर्ड बाई द लॉर्ड इट्स ऑल डार्क अराउंड मी प्लीज शो मी सम लाइट so you see we are in a dark dark tunnel and you want to look for some you want somewhere to see some light at the end of the tunnel and then we see the light and then thank god and then we see that light is of a rushing train to <laughs> <laughs> jump out of the way and sometimes when we have a problem and we pray to the lord and sometimes we find a bigger problem comes up say what's going on but sometimes through the bigger problem a solution comes up so here there was rangad was showing dissension not knowing intentionally but just because of disheartenment he was showing dissension among the vanaras and hanuman was praying let us resolve on this we have to find sita we can't have a dissension among us and as he sat down in disheartenment then suddenly this giant bird came waddling along who was that jatayu's brother older brother sampatti Sampati, yeah. Sampati came there, and he said, "Oh, all these monkeys are like food for us." Mm -hmm. Now, Anga had already decided, "I'll fast to death." It's one thing to fast to death, but it's quite another thing to know that your body is going to be bitten and chewed and eaten. It's horrible. Everybody has to die. You know, there are now an animal slaughter is very bad, but some animal, some animals, especially say lobsters and crabs, what people do is they cook them alive because they say that too many germs are formed in them, so the germs will. So you know, you can actually see them burning, flapping them cooked alive, and then they die in burning because of the heat. At least kill them and then eat them. They don't do that. So here, Angada, when he saw. Okay, this jetta is going to eat me. It's one thing to know I'm going to die, but it's quite another to know that my body is going to be bitten and eat, torn and eaten. So they want they had a problem, and it's even bigger problem had come. But Anuman was still remembering the Lord, and then as Angada spoke, Allah, just as jetta you perished, we will also perish without succeeding in Lord Ram's mission. As he spoke the word jetta you, what happened? Some Sampati said, Oh, what do you know about jetta you? And then Sampati told his whole story. And Sampati said, "Yes, I know where is Sita. Where is Sita? On the side of the ocean. And the Vanaras were not very far from the ocean. And as soon as they came to the, oh, Sita is just across the ocean. They ran there, and they ran there, jubilant, roaring in joy. And then they came to the ocean, and suddenly they became silent. It's." They thought they found Sita, and then they realize they're not. They're not. They're confounded completely. How do you cross the ocean? And all the wanderers were looking at each other. It's none of them could actually cross the ocean. They all started saying how far they could jump, but none of them could leap that far. Angad said, "I might be able to leap all the way to Lanka, but I don't think I'll be able to come back. I won't have strength." Like Jamban said, "You are our prince. You should not go." He jumped and said, "I could have jumped across the whole earth when I was young, but now I have become old. Now I can't do that." And through it all, Hanuman was silent. And Jamba looked around, and then he looked at Hanuman, and then he started praising Hanuman. Oh, Hanuman, do you not remember the blessings that you have? And as Jamba started speaking to Hanuman. It is as he started speaking to Hanuman, reminding him of his promise, reminding about his blessings. Hanuman, not only his morale became higher, bigger, his physique also started becoming bigger. His physique also started becoming bigger and bigger and bigger. 
And then Hanuman, as Jambavan is finished, reminding Hanuman of his illustrious birth, of the great blessings he had got, of the great powers that he had. By that time, Hanuman was towering high above everyone else. Not in the sense of superiority, but in the sense of being able to do what was the necessity. And then, with Jai Shri Ram, Hanuman roared and just jumped up onto a nearby mountain. And from that mountain, he jumped up into the sky, ready to go across to Lanka. So, Jambavan played this crucial role of reminding Hanuman of his powers. Similarly, for all of us, now, we may have certain material abilities that we know, we may have certain abil material abilities that we don't know, we may have, we may or may, whatever it is beyond our material abilities that we have or don't have, we have, all of us have spiritual potency. We are souls. Our spirituality is our greatest strength. Because once we understand that I am a soul, I am indestructible, I am a part of God, then the world's uncertainties and anxieties they won't disturb us that much. So that knowledge is provided by the spiritual master. The spiritual master and the, the, that spiritual master tells us who we really are. Now in a sense, we talk, when we talk about spirituality, we, talk about, we have to become humble, we have to develop humility. Yes, we may think I am very great, but spirituality means you have to understand that I am fallen. But it's not just that. Our conception of greatness is, I am great because I have this job, I have got this position, I have got this ability. All this is based on externals. But internally, we are great because we are connected with the great. We are blessed by the great. So, life will often bring many problems upon us. But spiritual knowledge helps us understand that bigger than what faces us is what graces us. Bigger than what faces us is what graces us. What graces us is our own spiritual knowledge, our own spiritual consciousness, our own spiritual awareness of Krishna and his protection. With Krish when Krishna is with us, no matter how big a problem may be, with Krishna we, are, we can face any problem that we have. <coughs> Arjun at the start of the Gita was disheartened. I'll conclude with this point that sometimes I, I, we are put in a situation where we feel utterly helpless. Arjun felt like that. How can I fight against my relatives, against my grandfather, against my elders, my teacher? If I don't fight against them, then what face will I show to the Yudhishthir, to Draupadi? How will we live? We will be ridiculed. What do I do in this situation? So he just felt helpless. We all can be in a situation sometimes when we feel there is just nothing I can do. There is, I'm so locked in by the situation that I'm helpless. Have any of you felt like that any time? Mm -hmm. hmm? You feel you are helpless. Anyone? Yes. Now, thank you. <laughs> so now when we feel I am powerless, we can do a, What happens that sense of powerlessness, that itself sometimes makes us discouraged. Mm -hmm. That oh, I can't do anything. And then we start feeling uh, self-pity. We start feeling sorry for ourselves, we start going into depression, we start going into resentment and this whole negativity comes up. So we can jolt ourselves out of that feeling of powerlessness by a counterintuitive question. So things are terrible right now, but think, no matter how bad things are, can I make them worse? What kind of question is this? You know, already they are bad, who wants to make them worse? <laughs> no, that's not the point. But can we make them worse? No matter how bad situations are, we can always make them worse. I might be, I might be bedridden because my leg is fractured. That's a bad situation. But I can take a hammer and fracture my other leg also. <laughs> Obviously, I shouldn't do that. But the point is, if we can make things worse, then we are not as powerless as we think. If we can make things worse, then we can make them better also. And to the extent we turn toward Krishna, to the extent we turn toward Krishna and remember Krishna. See, if we just see the world in front of us and see the problems, we'll feel, 
This is so terrible. What can I do? Just like all the Vanaras were feeling powerless seeing the huge ocean. So we also will feel powerless. What can I do? But if we turn towards the Lord, then <clears throat> we will remember that I am a soul and Krishna is the whole. And I am connected with him. So that turning toward Krishna <coughs> is done with the help of devotees. With the help of our Shiksha Guru, Diksha Guru, with other devotees. So Jambavan is not exactly a spiritual master. He's a friend. He's an older friend. So because he's more like a Shiksha Guru or an older friend. But similarly, if when we are feeling discouraged because of life's difficulties, if we have someone who can speak some words of affirmation, who can give us some encouragement, who can give us some enthusiasm, who can give us some illumination, then we will also start feeling confident. We all have big problems in our life. But instead of telling the whole world about how big the problems are, we can tell ourselves how big God is. And sometimes we even go to God, but we just keep telling, oh, this is a big problem, this is a big problem, this is a problem I have. Don't tell God how big your problems are. Tell your problems how big God is. When we do that, then we'll find that we will get inner strength. And with that inner strength, a way will emerge. So for all of us, when we face difficulties, I started the talk by talking about ability and maturity. So sometimes uh, it is the external helpless situations that force us to develop maturity. The maturity means what? Ultimately, mat maturity means to be able to think of big things. Uh, immaturity means what? A child has a toy and if the toy gets broken, the child starts crying. That's immaturity, things break. You don't have to cry like that. But so when we are able to think about bigger things, we are aware of bigger reality, then we are mature. Say if somebody has a two people have a quarrel with each other. And then because of their quarrel, they say, you know, we break down, we break this relationship. <coughs> One of my friends is a marriage counselor. She so was telling me that it's the kind of things because of which people people break up. It's, it's, uh, it's ridiculous. He said, I have seen only two kinds of couples. So those who quarrel with each other and those whom I don't know very well. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody will have some difficulties. But instead of learning to see things in perspective, yes, two people are together with difficulties. But immaturity means, means to make small things very big. You know, make small things very big. So he was telling that one person, one woman came to him and he says, I want a divorce. He says, why? He says, my husband took my car without my permission. How dare you take like this? He doesn't respect me. Now you could say there may many other things might be going on over there. But still to think that that reason is enough to separate. It's childish. So immaturity means to make small things very big. Maturity means to see things in perspective. Keep small things small. Now one principle we can keep in mind is never take permanent decisions based on temporary emotions. Can you repeat this? Never take permanent decisions based on temporary emotions. Now our emotions can go mad at times. And we can't deny our emotions. They are there and we will feel like that. But we don't have to take permanent decisions based on those temporary emotions. So maturity means we can see the big picture. And ultimately, in the biggest picture, we see Krishna. So when we see Krishna, when we are connected with Krishna, that connection gives us such security that temporary emotions and temporary situations won't shake us that much. So the, sometimes when the external difficulty and external powerlessness comes in our life, that is an impetus for us to develop maturity. And as we develop the maturity, then whatever ability is required for us to move forward in our life, that ability will also be discovered <coughs> and we'll be able to move ahead in our lives. So I'll summarize quickly what I spoke today. I spoke on this theme of how <coughs> uh, ability needs to be balanced with maturity. I started with the story of <coughs> how Hanuman was, was a child, but because he was from the, he was also a child of uh, Vayu, so he had celestial powers. I talked about how in today's world, there's a quarantine between the earth and the higher levels. At that time, it was not there. So he had the child's frivolity, child's energy, and he tried to catch the celestial.
first the son and then Indra himself. So because of that he was knocked out and Vayu got angry and then Brahma and all the devtas blessed him profusely. So when he was blessed in that way, the children, uh, he still had his frivolity. And along with that big ability that he had, it became a big headache for everyone. So in today's world also we see that <coughs> technology has increased our external power enormously. And unless we can develop inner power, we will not be able to use the <coughs> external power in a responsible way. Rather we will hurt ourselves and hurt others. Now if you want to just, we get bored, we can spend hours and hours in boredom. If we get angry, <coughs> we might take a, some people might take a gun and shoot someone. We can do much more things because we have external power. That's why we need inner power. And inner power, maturity comes best by spirituality. So just as the Vandaras, the sages took away Hanuman's power so that Hanuman was not the problem. It is his, ex too much ability that he had was the problem. So generally, if some person is troubling us, we don't have to blame them. We can give them the benefit of doubt and try to see if the situation which is causing the trouble. So even Keshari and uh, Anjanya couldn't help at that time. Because Hanuman is too mischievous. So parents can sometimes protect their children, like Arjun, with the bow appraise. But sometimes the children, when they grow up, just can't do anything to become like Draupadi. So we can help the unable, but not the unwilling. So. Hanuman grew up to become a powerful Vandara, but not an extraordinarily powerful Vandara. And he still had phenomenal knowledge. And thus he, he won the heart of Ram just by his speech. So we speak to give others peace of mind, not a peace of our mind. And then eventually, when the need was there, where Hanuman was very expert, and when Angad was so in dissension, he had he prayed. And through that prayer, the Lord helped. He remembered the Lord's help. But sometimes the Lord's help comes in the form of a bigger problem. So Sampati was the problem. Sampati was the problem. But through Sampati, the solution came up. And then, where well, none of the Vandaras could jump across. At that time, Anuman remembered. Anuman was reminded by Jambavan. And he got the ability. He, re he regained his ability, rather. So for all of us, when we are discouraged in life, we need someone who will encourage us. We may not have mystical power like Hanuman, but we all have the power of our spirituality, our own core indestructibility and our connection with the infallible omnipotent Lord. So if, some, if we have friends, mentors, guides who remind us of this, then we'll realize that greater than what faces us is what graces us. That with, with the Lord's grace, whatever problems we may face, we can deal with them. Sometimes uh, when we feel that I am helpless, we can ask ourselves, can I make things worse? If I can, then I can make them better also. I am not as powerless as I think. And the way I make them better <coughs> is, firstly, by thinking about the Supreme, by directing my thought towards Supreme. Maturity essentially means to be able to see the big picture, not get caught by small things. So never take irreversible decisions based on, or never take permanent decisions based on temporary mm -hmm. emotions. So as we connect with Krishna, when we understand that he is so big and that connection with him gives us more stability, then life's ups and downs won't affect us so much. We won't get disheartened. And once we have that maturity, sooner or later the ability to deal with our situation will be revealed to us or will be delivered to us. And that's how we'll be able to move forward in our lives. So instead of craving that I don't have ability because of which I am trapped in the situation, I can't do anything, we can strive for developing maturity. And then we will be able to find a way to accept the situation as well as to alter the situation in due course. So let's conclude with the prayer which we offered in the beginning to Hanumanji. Mano javam marat tulya vegam Mano javam marat tulya vegam Jitendriyam buddhimatam varishtam Jitendriyam buddhimatam varishtam Vatatma jam vanara yutha mukhyam Vatatma jam vanara yutha mukhyam Shri Ramadutam sharanam prapadye Shri Ramadutam sharanam prapadye 
फिर हनुमान जी की हनुमान जयंती महामहोत्सव की कृष्ण प्रभुपाद की गौर भक्तवृंद की गौर प्रेमानंद Are there any questions? Do we have time for questions? A few minutes. Any questions? Insufferable foods. Okay. <laughs> How do you suffer insufferable foods? Okay. See, there is physical proximity and there is emotional proximity. Okay. That means sometimes by some situations in our life, some people might just be there in our life and we can't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. So physical proximity, we can't, sometimes it's not in our control. We might be in a relationship, we might be working with colleagues or where, whatever. We might have somebody as a neighbor or whatever. You know, I have traveled across so many temples and communities. You know, everywhere, people tell me, there are some people who are like troublemakers. <laughs> it's almost like it's a rule. Every temple should have someone like that. <laughs> Every community should have someone like that. Now, of course, they don't think they're troublemakers. They think that, yeah, I'm helping everyone. Um, so it's, there's two kinds of people. You know, some people bring happiness wherever they go. And some people bring happiness whenever they go. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, now we cannot, uh, sometimes the phys if, if physical distance can't be created. Now why would we want to suffer insufferable foods? Because we could, we could just uh, create a distance from them, but sometimes it's just not possible to create a distance. So at that time, what we need to do is, we can avoid emotional proximity. Emotional proximity means what? Generally, in every relationship, there is an obligatory part and there is a voluntary part. And the obligatory part, if, if we have a sense of responsibility or obligation, the obligatory part has to be done. Say like if a person is working in a, as a, in a, in a counter in a supermarket. The obligatory part is that they have to take the money and uh, they have to give the bill or whatever transactional they have to do. The, now you can, you, somebody, somebody has put a plastic smile on their face. But being courteous, it's voluntary. You cannot legislate that. So in every relationship, there is an obligatory part and a voluntary part. So now we... If the voluntary part, we cannot really do unless there is inspiration. In every relationship, there is some contribution and there is some expectation. That's for the reciprocation. I do something for you and you do something for me. So <clears throat> generally when we say somebody is an insufferable fool, what that means is that there is no contribution from their side. They are not doing anything that we want them to do. In fact, they are doing the opposite of it many times. On the other side, we, we are doing a lot for them. And generally, when this relationship becomes strained, when basically expectations are not met. Not just not met, there is a huge mismatch. Say, if I feel I am doing so much for the other person, and the other, I feel that the other person is doing nothing for me, he's just taking me for granted or even exploiting me, then that becomes a problem. So now what do we do in such a situation? First is that we don't have to think that my whole existence is bound. There is an obligatory part, there is a voluntary part. And in the obligatory part, we may have to do, in the voluntary part, we can create a distance for ourselves. Not that we become resentful or rude or like that, but just that we don't have to be that emotionally invested in that relationship. Generally, different relationships work well at different distances. So we have to find, sometimes we may want that relationship to be very close, but the other person doesn't want that then okay the other person doesn't want that if we have tried our best is there some misunderstanding about my ayahs or whatever because of which they're doing that if we tried that then okay whatever distance they wanted let's work it at that relation at that level itself so it's uh, that we can't in their relation in their relationship also we can't they also have a voluntary part and they have an obligatory part so we can't force the voluntary part having so we can have our own space if you understand that I'm not like my existence is not bound, I have a voluntary part and I can create my space over there. 
Having said that, you know, we can also try to find out uh, what is it that is making that person insufferable. In general, most people are not bad people. Most people are not wicked people. It's often some experience which they have had with us or with someone else because of which they have become negative. So say, you know, say if you and I have having a transaction and if I give you money in Indian rupees, but you have never seen Indian rupees, you only know, the only currency you know is US dollars. Then I may give you a big pile of Indian rupees, but you will say, you are not given me anything. <laughs> so if you give me something worth hundred dollars, and I give you, I give much five thousand rupees for that. It's proportionate. So maybe seven thousand rupees, whatever. It's but if you have no idea what the currency is, what this currency means, then you will say, I gave you so much, you give me nothing, and I'll say, I am giving you so much. Why are you so ungrateful? So what is happening is, the two people are dealing in two different currencies. So similarly, now this with, with currency is an external object, we can easily understand the, that you know, if people don't know the currency, they won't value what is being given in that currency. But all of us, we could say, we have in our own personality, our own currency. So for example, some people, they feel very valued and respected when you pay attention to them. You, now everybody does that, but for some people it is extremely important. And when you are talking, if you are doing multitasking, just get incredibly, I am hearing you. No, you are not hearing me. So what happens is, for, so now, for some people, it might be that, uh, you have to appreciate them. You have to appreciate them. You speak words of appreciation, that's very important, otherwise they don't feel valued. For some people it might be that, you know, if you tell them I will do something, you have to do it. And if you don't do it, then they feel, you don't take me seriously. You don't take our relationship seriously. You're not serious about anything. It's a small thing. For, a, for what? What is the big deal? For them it is not a small thing. So generally, we need to understand their currency. And how do we understand it? Broadly two ways. Now what is it? If we don't do, they complain and nag incessantly. <laughs> and what is it, if we do, they appreciate very much. And sometimes, you know, the relationship has come to such a level that no matter what we do, they are not going to appreciate us. <laughs> now, if it has come to that level, then we can see if they appreciate someone else. Okay, what do they appreciate about that person? So generally, through appreciation and criticism, we can understand what is the currency of that person. And then, if we start paying them in that currency, we will start, we, we are doing our part to bring about a change. And it, it is quite likely that if we start, uh, start uh, contributing in that relationship in the currency that they value, then they may well change. And then if we start seeing them changing, then we can slowly start expressing what is the currency that we expect something from them. So, some, because sometimes they may feel I am doing so much for you, why don't you value it? So, a husband may say that I am working so hard, I am providing so much such a, uh, to a wife, I am providing such a big house, so comfortable. The wife may say I just want to spend some time with you, come back home early. So, you know, the husband says you are always nagging me. And the husband may say, I do so much, you don't value it only. So both feel dissatisfied because you know, a child, a parent may give, a, give expensive toys, you know, very expensive cricket bat, expensive cricket ball, cricket pads. And the father may say, I love you so much. The child may say, I just want you to play with me. The father says, I don't have time for that. So the child may not want the expensive bat, the child may just want the father to teach me how to play with the bat. Play with me. So what we have to do is, to try to understand each other's currency and if you understand then it is uh, it is very much possible that the coldness that is in the relationship that will go down so if you are in an obligatory relationship then it's best to try to understand the currency 
and at least if we start contributing in that currency we can get the we can get the confidence that we are doing our part if they don't do the part what can we do we can't force anyone so then if that happens then we have to again as it we have to create our own space and we get our emotional nourishment from other relationships within the limits of dharma but other relationships so sometimes the, broadly speaking the universe will be reciprocal that means that you know, if we give love we will get love but just that we may not we may give love to one person and we may get love from the, someone else there some people who may just pay no attention and they give us so much attention and affection some people will do so much and they don't even look at us <laughs> so that's how it is unfortunately in life so we have to find out we have to we have to some relationship will work naturally and some relationship will require work so broadly speaking we should know which relationship is which and we should have enough interactions which give us strength so that we can do those interactions which require our strength so if we are having only the second kind of interactions where you know, like some people as soon as you start talking with them you know your breath stops moving you know, it's like you become tensed every word speaking with them is like walking on a landmine what will cause an explosion you don't know so now if that is the kind of interaction we have to have with everyone throughout the day throughout the week throughout the year we get suffocated i can't do this isn't it so there some people with who, who will be like that and we have to be very guarded with them but we also need to have other relationships where we will get strength we will get comfort we will get the attention the warmth the love and then from this when we get the strength we'll be able to do this so maturity i have a whole another class on maturity loneliness and inferiority complex so but in that maturity means to recognize that no one is obliged to fulfill my needs i'll repeat this maturity means to recognize that no one is obliged to fulfill my needs so like a small baby cries and the baby expects the mother or the father some nanny to come running and feed the baby or take care of the baby the hunger is a real need and has to be fulfilled now if an adult feels hungry and the adult starts crying <laughs> come on don't be a baby is it now the adult's hunger is also a genuine need but the adult recognizes that no one is obliged to fulfill my need that doesn't mean my need will not be fulfilled but i have to take the responsibility to fulfill my need so i have to cook some food i have to buy some food i have to stock some food so similarly if we are not getting a particular emotional nourishment in a particular relationship then we have to understand that nobody is obliged to fulfill my need this person is not obliged so then i have to develop other lateral relationships within the limits of dharma by which i can get my need fulfilled so then we'll find that even these relationships with difficult people hmm, can actually strengthen us although it's very difficult to deal with difficult people but sometimes they make though they make us stronger they help us to develop maturity tolerance humility sensitivity and then that can help us to grow in our life also so that's how we can deal with difficult people okay okay any other question quickly so thank yeah. you very yeah what about negative energy people who bring negative energy into your life yes i would say the broadly same principles apply what about people who bring negative energy into your lives so we need to have other people who bring positive energy and we need to balance that so there are some people who bring again what can you do there are some people who can find solution to every problem and some people who can find a problem with every solution <laughs> <laughs> now it's not necessarily a bad thing hmm? actually both have their role so if you are doing some new project we need creativity we need optimism but then we also need caution so those who can see the negative that's also a strength but the, it becomes a weakness only when you see only the negative hmm? so i am going from here after a couple of weeks to phoenix i am going to speak in intel over there there i am going to speak on the power the on on 
the positive power of negative thinking. The positive power, normally we think about the power of positive thinking. But negative thinking also has its power. So people who say, see negative are not necessarily bad. See, there is, there is creativity and there is cautiousness. Caution. So those who are optimistic, they all have creativity, creativity, creativity. That's good. But then you also have to be on the ground. Our head may be in the sky, but our feet have to be on the ground. So what happens is, those who are very positive, their head is so much high up in the sky that they lose their touch with the ground. <laughs> and people who are too negative, they're not, they're not only feet in the ground, their head is also looking at the ground only. And they don't look at anything positive. So we can learn to take uh, whatever negativity they are sending, if there is some something sensible within that, we take that. And beyond that, we just leave it. Okay, this is the nature of this person. So we need to, first of all, have some source of positivity. And secondly, by recognizing that the negativity is not a weakness, is not necessarily a problem. It is constant negativity that is the problem. And if that is their disposition now, then we can take whatever they say with a pinch of salt, maybe evaluate. If there's something sensible in it, that's okay. Otherwise, just uh, brush it off. So brushing it off is not that easy. But if we have some sources of positivity within us, our spirituality can also be a source of positivity. You know, our connection with Krishna, our bhakti, our sadhana, all this can also give us positivity. But negativity, uh, people who bring negativity, uh, rather than seeing them as bad, we see them as excessive. Because if we see them as bad, our whole attitude towards them will become negative. And we don't want that. We don't want their negativity to create negativity within us. So what is it? It's 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 what they have is also strength, but too much of anything good can become bad. So too much negativity can be bad. Therefore, we need to ration it. They'll speak a lot of criticism, we just brush it off. But if something makes sense, we can accept that. And overall, if we keep doing this gradually, we will also develop some thick skin. We all in the path of bhakti, we want a soft heart. But the soft heart has to be covered with a thick skin. Yeah. If you have only a soft heart, we will be torn apart. Mm. If we have only thick skin, <laughs> we will tear others apart. <laughs> 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 so we need a soft heart and a thick skin. Okay. So thank you very much. The Prabhupada ki. Gaur Bhakta Vinda ki. Gaur Prima Anandi. Yeah. So I have